Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Terry. Some of your facts are that um, 18 to 25,000 folks are illegals in Providence or throughout the state. I missed that part. That would be th for throughout the state. That's the DMV figures for how many illegal aliens in Rhode Island would be eligible for a driver's license. And, 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 and how do they get those numbers? How do they know? They probably get them from the U.S. Census Bureau. I'm, I'm only quoting what they said. I don't know what investigations they've done. Well, you, you brought up a point. I think you said the DMV would have to um, look at 63 to 67 type new languages. Is well, that, that the number? That's, 60, that's a known fact that Providence School System deals with 63 different languages. But you said the DMV so, would deal with 63 well, to 67 Potentially, languages. if there's 63 different languages dealt within the school system, their parents must speak those same languages or whatever. So yeah. we... You know, it only stands to reason. That because somewhere in here in this pile, <laughs> I got a letter, well, we all got letters from the DMV supporting Representative Williams' bill. But then if there's 63 or 67 languages, America is nothing but a soup. So welcome to America. It's been, it's, it's, well, it's been that way for a long time. I'm not talking about the immigrants that's, the legal immigrants that speak all these languages. I'm talking about people that are here illegally speaking all those foreign languages, and that's not necessarily that we, have, we should have to take care of them. And if, if the DMV is willing, and I'm going back uh, to what I've said before, the DMV is willing, and I'm going to paraphrase your question, yeah. so I apologize if that's I say right. it wrong. Yeah. But if the DMV is willing to come up with some idea on how to translate, because I'm thinking they do, because they already sent us a bill of support for Rep. Williams... Bill. Well, so they must have something that we don't know, or, or maybe they got something in, that they're working on right now. Well, I think if you if you looked into it and you could check with uh, uh, the lieutenant governor's chief of staff, he told me personally that there was a they had the pr the procedures written when Governor Chafee was still in office to put this in because certain people, Governor Chafee and a lot of other people, are in favor of driver's licenses for illegal aliens. And I just think it's, it, it's unacceptable. And when, when we do some of these things, when we give these benefits to illegal aliens, we're violating all sorts of laws. And when you said you go back to 1979, and this was going on in 1979, well, that should have been taken care of then, just because we don't enforce the laws. Like in 1986, when President Reagan did the... the uh, amnesty for three million illegal aliens, they thought that was the end of the problem. All of those laws, they said, that's it. We're not going to have this problem ever again. Well, come fast forward 30 years later, we have 10 times the problem that they had in those days because, as you said, they had the same problem in 1979. We never enforced the laws that are on the books for immigration since 1986, and all of the problems that we're experiencing today could be addressed simply by enforcing the laws that are already on the books. And so you're, you're absolutely right. But you know what? That part of my conversation also said, let's talk, let's talk about today. I can't help it if I'm just an old-fashioned liberal, my brother. Well, but it does like say, it. but I'm just worried about the people here now. And how do I go about solving that issue now and do I take it out on children do I take it out on whole families but yet I mean I've got letters of support even from the attorney general who's kind of wavering but saying well we gotta look at fingerprints we got support from all different agencies well that's worse what, what he <coughs> said what you said about the attorney general said I, I bet you everybody in this room would be against oh, most of the people in the room be against well, I did say fingerprinting and I also said wavered but the fact that's why I asked and there's anybody from the federal government here and so that tells me that everybody in this room has got to solve this problem. But the fact remains that I've gotten letters from all over, the, we all got letters from all over the place in support of this. And I agree with both of y'all, it should not be fear. It, fear, it should be fear. And we're trying, but I just, I don't want to repeat myself and be repetitious. The fact is, I've got the DMV who's willing to say, I'm willing to, st I'm willing to handle this. I'm willing to make sure these, pe these good folks know how to speak the language of whatever they speak so they understand when they get out there. Just 
trying to make you understand. Okay. In, I, in, I understand in my what liberal you're saying. View. Yeah. But, but let, me, let me just add this. And I think the reason that the DMV and the colonel of the state police are in support of this bill is because the governor is in support of this bill. And the governor, I don't know, I can't say that she asked them or anything like that, but I think that influence that the governor is the, uh, the head of the state of Rhode Island and Colonel Doherty works for him and the people at the DMV work for the governor, then if she comes out and says, I'm 100% in favor of this, as a matter of fact, during her campaign, she said this statement. She said, I can't tell you how proud I am to be the first gubernatorial candidate to, that's in favor of driver's licenses for illegal aliens. So I think that's why some of those opinions are changing, is because the, the governor is so strongly in favor of this. And just because the governor's in favor of it, it's still, in my opinion, doesn't even come close to making it right, Joe. And I'll, I'll let it go with this. Uh, hey, look, Roger Williams wasn't too happy about a lot of stuff, but he came here with the goodness of his heart, and maybe Rhode Island is just trying to say, you know what, maybe we'll open up our arms to these good people and show them how to get registered at the DMV. So I guess history has a way of coming back around. And like Rep. Williams said, hey, we're here, we're not going nowhere, but thank oh, you. Oh, I, I understand that, and it's that we're, that we're here is growing by leaps and bounds, Joe. And that's a, I, that's a concern, like when I said that would invite more illegal aliens to come to the state of Rhode Island. If, if the population, if you want to look at it, if you want to just say look at the Hispanic population, and from 2000, and, I believe from 2000, and eight to 2015, there's a 54% increase in the Hispanic population. Now, that's legal immigrants and illegal immigrants. But, I mean, th that's a big increase. You're right. We're here, and you're not going anywhere, I guess. But the, uh, it's growing by leaps and bounds, and how much more can, it be, can we absorb? And, and that's got nothing think. to do with where people come from or anything like that. You know no, thank that. Thank you. Thank you. He is supposed to be a Latina. I ain't going to leave her behind. <laughs> Representative McEntee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a question for Representative Natalillo. Um, when you, you would rather, your position is uh, become legal first, uh, get a license later. Um, this bill, though, has a lot of um, protection with all of the different, um, uh, different documentations that these people have to produce. One that I think is, uh, speaks loud and clear is two years of a tax return in Rhode Island. But what I'm trying to suggest, we're hearing here 25,000, 10,000, how many? We don't even know what the number is. But wouldn't this be the beginning step of trying to identify what the problem is, how many people are here, and how we start, like even the state police, like they say, it, this is the beginning of solving the problem, in my mind. And this is because of the high cost and the difficulty of uh, these people becoming legalized. Isn't this, I mean, it's, you can look at it two ways. but You can look at it step. two ways. And I think this would identify the issue, which is the first step of any problem. Identify what the problem is. How, how great is it? How big is it? And, and how do we deal with it's it? It's not so much as a problem that you're, you're phrasing it as a problem. It's, it's, it's more of a, not a consistent process. It's, it's not a problem until, until you look at it as a problem. It's an inconsistent process because we're, we have a certain expectation at this point in time of becoming a citizen. That process, the individual wants to come here and become a citizen. They go through the process. The process is lengthy. The process has an expenditure. They're both, one is long and one is expensive. What, what, so what does I'm this process is this, expensive? This, this process Would that we're be. speaking of is, is not consistent with what we had talked about and an expectation for other individuals. So we're actually changing the whole aspect and outlook of what we're looking at and I'm not in support of that. So we're, we are looking at it from two different perspectives. I'm not in support of changing the outlook. I'm, 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 I'm a component of the, the consistency of what we're looking at. 